Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. This is the R&B Money Podcast. Come on, yeah. The authority yes, sir. on all things <laughs> R&B. Arena R&B. Arena <laughs> R&B. Chart I, topping. I don't even come outside. <laughs> For less than. For less than. This is this is a, this is yeah, M. That's an M. I'm just keep throwing, <laughs> throwing them up. This is, this is a bunch of M's. <laughs> We are here. Yeah. yeah, tell them who we here with. Oh, with the Presidente. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, look at these credits here. <laughs> you know what? We're going to get into the credits. I just want to announce my brother in the building. Terrence Punch Henderson, the president of TD. Yes, <laughs> Yes, sir. Right now, <laughs> currently. <laughs> currently. Yeah. Appreciate that. Man. How you feeling, brother? Man, I'm good money. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Nigga said, I know. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TDE. Yes, of course. Sir. Yes, sir. Like it's it's you know. There's a there's a thing, you know, that that we're all able to recognize when we're in this business and there's a, the word is dominance. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. When when you have a crew or or a label or you know, a thing that comes along and just says, "Look, we're going to we're going to own the time for a moment. We're going to mm. lock up Billboard. We're going to lock up social media. We're going to lock up branding. We're going we're to just lock that up for a moment and secure a spot amongst the top of everything. Yes, sir. Because you can call it out the people that are at the top of the game. It's not a mystery. Mm-hmm. We know who's in the fucks these peoples are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you guys keep doing it. Man. What what why are you doing this? Why why be so disrespectful? Is that was that the <laughs> was that the goal to disrespect everyone? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 I come through and shake this thing yeah. up a little bit. Yeah. But nah, you know what? It's really just about in its essence, just the passion and love for what we're doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I hope that don't sound like too much of a cliche answer, but it's real. Like, I think we'd be doing it, most of us would be doing it free if we wasn't even getting paid. Yeah. So it's that that same passion and love that we started with mm-hmm. and people just happen to relate to it. I don't think you can do it unless you have that, right? Because Absolutely. Because everything else is so fleeting. Everything else is up, up and down. And so what is... Mm-hmm. What is the nuance? What is the deciding factor in you staying in when when the desires and the dreams look cloudy and don't mm-hmm. look like they're adding up to the thing oh, that you boy. believed it was going to be? <laughs> it's got to be some love involved. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about to me. Is the uh, it's that exchange of, of of love back and forth, like. Once I learn something, then I can pass it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And the joy they feel when they learn something new, like you see it in their face, like mm-hmm. that's the the essence when you strip everything down to its bare minimum for me. Mm-hmm. And that's whether it's, I don't know, learning a new concept, learning how to write a certain way, learning how to vocalize a certain way, like just the 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 learning. Right. You know I mean, it's the love for learning yeah. that really keep me going and motivated. So to expound on something you said that just even you're saying stripping things down, right? Right. Let's 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 go back to the beginning and strip down hmm. this whole Talk to inception and the mindset that you guys had mm-hmm. with starting a label like TDE. Right. So I start from the beginning. I was uh I was trying to start my own record company with a couple of my partners that I went to school with. You know what I mean? I learned very quick that you need a few dollars to, yeah, to, get, mm. to get that Couple. going. Yeah, yeah. Couple. You know what I mean? Um, 
So I, I was just always constantly studying music, the music industry, anything that got to do with it, a, a magazine pop up, I'm reading the cover to cover, an interview on, I'm watching it behind the scenes come, I'm looking at that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Top, who's my blood relative. Oh, y'all family family. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Sure okay. Yeah, his uh, his mom and my grandmother are sisters. Wow. Right. Makes even more sense now. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he was uh, just getting started in the music business. So he one foot in the street, one foot, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, trying to get things going. So he built a studio at his house in uh, Carson. So I always pull up, like, so I have a little lunch break or something at work. How far is, is, is Watts to Carson? It's a... Uh, well, Compton is right in between. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's Watts, Compton, then Carson. Carson. Okay. Yeah, if you're traveling straight down Central. So it's one city over. But, um, so yeah, I pull up on him and, you know, we'll just talk and talk and talk and just have these conversations about music and about business. So at one point he was like, yo, you just come over here and do it with me. So I'm like, yeah. So that happened and... That's when the early days of TDE start to form. So we have artists coming through and producers coming through making beats. So eventually J-Rock came through. Mm. Um, Maybe a few months after that, Kendrick came through. Year later, Ab Soul. Then we got Schoolboy Q shortly after him. So And what year is this? This is uh, it's about 04. Roughly, mm-hmm. maybe oh three, going into oh four. So what? Look, so so what was your your setup, or in terms, like, in terms of the structure? What was the invitation? Because you're saying you was you guys were starting a record company, right? right? And what did that necessarily entail to to get the word out, to get people thinking that they needed to come through and see what you guys were doing? I mean, our whole thing was to try to figure out a way to get to these major labels. Mm-hmm. So he was doing stuff like, remember this nigga Top would go to the, the industry book, the thick industry book they used to have? Yeah. And in the back, it's the glossary. Like everybody names and positions and they office phone numbers. So he'd call a label and fake like he had a meeting with the CEO or whatever. <laughs> and they end up calling him back and <laughs> build a relationship like that. It was that or we'd go pat down record plants, see who in there. We go pad down. Listen, I heard the lady. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey. We go pad down. You yeah. wasn't going to get that one back. <laughs> <laughs> You've lived on West Coast for a long time. Oh, come on, man. I've been over here a long, long, long time. <laughs> Figure of speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what yeah, you got yeah, on absolutely. my 40, homie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But so now, you guys were really like, we're going to start a record company, and it's going to just encompass everything a record company does and then we're right. gonna we're gonna start looking for the pieces to put together mm-hmm. to make it what it is and then you right. start naming all the mm-hmm. all the all, all the, the artists yeah and j-rock obviously is from your neighborhood so mm-hmm. that's that made the most sense in the beginning right yeah it's a talented young homie from right. your neighborhood yeah it's the first thing we're gonna invest in absolutely but the thing is like we was we was winging it yeah you know mm-hmm. i mean we was trying to see what was gonna stick yeah. Because, again, we didn't have no prior um, experience in how to build a record label. So we just going off of kind of, you know I mean, just pieces that we seeing or stuff we hearing about and just building from there. Like, even the way J-Rock came about, like, it was another guy from our neighborhood that was supposed to be coming to the studio that day. Mm-hmm. So Top hit him, like, yo, I'm going to be over there. I'm going to pick y'all up for the studio. So this kid got impatient. Like, I guess he was waiting on the porch too long, and J-Rock was with him. So this nigga ended up leaving. J-Rock stayed. J-Rock stayed. <laughs> as soon as he walked off, that's when Top pulled up. It was like, where uh, so-and-so at? Like, man, he took off. Like, I'm finna go to the studio. Who rolling? J-Rock hopped in the car. Another dude hopped in the car. Once he heard J-Rock voice, that was it. That's crazy. <laughs> How long did it take y'all to get the Warner deal? Uh, we got the Warner because that deal. was y'all. That was y'all first. That was the first one. entry into yeah. the major label right system. Correct. Yep. yep. It was uh, 
we got that deal off of Top's relationships. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't build the buzz in the street okay. first yet. And then because of the buzz, get the deal. So it was all on relationships. And they heard rock and they like rock. And that was the deal from there. I think I was about oh six, maybe. Mm-hmm. So a few years then. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So had you guys had any music out? Not, Not really. really. Yeah. Cause this again, this is a funny time in in the business, the transition mm-hmm. between uh, all of the digital stuff and then the blog I era exactly and all of this stuff. About. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, <laughs> where do you actually put it out? We press some CDs up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you know, we get out and go try to sell them and hand them out, but that was the extent of it. Right. At that time. So at this point, it's just really money going out. Yeah, absolutely. Electric bill, crazy. Right. I mean, because that's, that's the thing, right? Like, we always talk about it. We we pride ourselves on being an informative yeah. show. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, and letting people know, like, what this thing takes. Yeah. And, and how this, you know, obviously we're in a different era now where a lot of cats is getting cracking on their phone. Yeah. That's far and few. Right. People don't, and, and a lot of those cats that got cracking on that phone was only cracking for a year, six yeah. months, 18 yeah. months. For sure. We talking about 20 years, 20 plus years in now yeah, absolutely that y'all still doing your thing and at the highest level right so that initial three years probably helps sustain what you guys are now oh for sure because that built all of the chemistry mm-hmm. that built that was the the learning period that was the, the incubation you know what i mean like everything we we imagine everything we're doing now during that time frame right. mm-hmm but like what you said though, like money was just going out. Like everybody eating off a top pocket at this point. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, the whole team at this point. You know what I mean, ain't nobody got no jobs. Ain't nobody. Everybody trying to do this music thing. So yeah. that's dollar menu on the jack in the box every day. I'm talk about it. Me, <laughs> me and Mister Split of Happy Meals, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Man, exactly. Taco Bell used to be around the corner. Hey, this is still a fruit taster. Just bring. <laughs> <laughs> had a few teeth to the mind and one of them caramel apple empanadas yeah. for a player. <laughs> I know the menu well. That's exactly what it was, Yeah, though. when you're trying to figure it out. Yeah, so. And again, this studio is attached to Top's house. So like I said, when the electric bill going crazy, like we run in the studio all night. So y'all, wait, that's, I, I, that's the part. I, I was going to ask you about that because you said he put <laughs> a studio at his house. Right. So not only is this like you know, this passion that he has mm-hmm. for, you know, creating this label. It's not like he got this somewhere else either. Yeah. Right. Y'all going to his house every day. Absolutely. So the see, it's a door <laughs> that lead into the house from the studio. <laughs> so things are going right to the kitchen too. Right. Yeah. And we're eating up all a cup of noodles yeah, and yes, cereal yeah. and whatever. So it was like really everybody's house at this point. He mm-hmm. welcomed everybody in. Yeah. You know what I mean? But Again, that was the that was the period that really cemented us and what we was doing in our goals. And ultimately, there was no real success from that first deal. No, it was not at all. Mm-hmm. So now you go three years, you get to the deal, mm-hmm. but then you also find out what this music business shit <laughs> yeah. is really about. Oh, we learned quick because we thought once as soon as Rock signed, we won. It's over. Yeah, yeah. That little you know, that's when it start. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's when it really, you really got to get cooking at this point. So we were sitting back, taking a lot of direction from the record company, Mm -hmm. which never been the thing to do. Hmm. Just from a standpoint of we dictate the culture. Right. There it is. You know what I mean? And they help facilitate what we dictate. Mm -hmm. So we was sitting back and waiting for them to do it. And tell us what to do and how to move and this and that. And we end up uh, just being stagnant for a while. Mm-hmm. And once we finally got some movement, like after we had a, uh, we was finna impact that radio with the uh, joint that Rock did with Lil Wayne called All My Life. All My Life. The week before, it was a whole regime change at the label. Been there. Bruh. We all know about those. Right. <laughs> So when they come in, they shut down everything, everything that was going on before them. 
You know what I mean? And yep. We like, yo, it was we hot at you this said a point. A week before impact. A week before. Shit. So they, you know what I mean? Shut that down or whatever. Mm-hmm. So radio backed up. We didn't really get no real spins on it like we should have or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like this when Wayne was at his peak. This is like oh eight. You got everything you yeah. need. You <laughs> right. got the boy. We got our guy. You know what I mean? So you can imagine how, how we felt at the time. <laughs> so do you immediately try to get out of the deal? Nah, we actually said, you know what? It's a regime change. I understand it. It's business. Mm-hmm. Let's try to rock with these dudes and see, you know what I mean, what we can get get out of it. So we end up going through another year of hoops and then pushing the goalposts back. Because mm. what, what I actually figured out was they didn't really want us there, but they didn't want to drop us. Mm. You know, Burbank is right around the corner. You can, <laughs> you can drive up to Burbank. Yeah. So they didn't want to deal with that headache, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and at that time, I want to say there was no other rap over there. Was it? You know what? At that Warner? time? Because, I mean, Warner at that time, in my opinion, was known for R&B and, like, Eric Benet was signed there at that time. Right. At that time, it was us. It was Mike Jones. Was Mike Jones through Warner? Yeah. And then uh, yeah. E-40 when he had that surgeons with uh He did with, with, with Lil John. Yeah. He, had, mm-hmm. he, did have that, he did have that deal up right. there at the time. And uh, Lil Scrappy was over there, too. So they had, like, that thing going to West yeah. and Mixed South. The South. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, so they would ask us to do stuff. Mm-hmm. We would hit that goal, and then they'd move it. Say, all right, now y'all got to do this. Then we'd do that. They was just biding their time. Right. Because they, really, they was doing stuff like when they knew we was coming to the building, you know, down in their promo room, and they had their priorities. <laughs> they break out. They hurry up and write that name <laughs> at the top of the board. <laughs> Put a couple extra, <laughs> yeah, put right? a couple extra posters up. <laughs> yeah, right. Look, look J Rock. <laughs> exactly. But we had gotten so cool with like the interns and mm-hmm. everybody in the building. Yeah, I knew what they was doing. They would call us and like, yo, man, they just put that stuff up right before y'all came. <laughs> so we like, all right, we know what time it is. Mm-hmm. So we went. Uh, we end up asking for the release. And what year is this now? This is twenty ten. Mm. It's now twenty ten. Right. From an initial deal that got done in 06. Right. This is crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah. You got to speak on it, bro, because yeah. people think. Mm-hmm. They like, think it's oh, sweet. It just got <laughs> cracking. Because yeah, we nah. haven't even got into right. Interscope yet. Yeah. We ain't even got to Interscope. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We ain't got into Section 80 yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> it's insane. What's funny is Rock was shooting the freshman cover, 2010, XXL freshman. Mm-hmm. The same day, me and Top went to the office to ask for the release. So we in the office, you know what I mean? We going back and forth. We arguing with these dudes. And what stuck out to me was one of the head guys was like, you know what? We like you guys. You guys are cool. Call us if you ever get a Southern artist. And I'm like, what? <laughs> right. That was my face, just like that. Like, what, what are you talking about? A Southern artist. So it let me know then, like, how the industry worked. It's like, the South away. was hot. It's following mm-hmm. away. At the time. So that's what they wanted to focus on. And that's what they had artists. been making some money off of. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. You know I mean? This was when OJ the Juice Man was hot. Like I said, Mike Jones and the Houston thing was yeah. moving. Lil John was popping. Atlanta was booming. So... It's like, oh, you're not looking for talent. You're looking for whatever the trend is. Yeah. So we don't belong here, no way. Like, all right, we out. So we left with everything. Like all the masters and the promo van. Mm. <laughs> Pat down. <laughs> you heard him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pat down. Give y'all me, left, give y'all me the left, van, left with a Warner promo van? <laughs> Give we me gonna, the van. We're gonna need this. We're gonna need, need this, this to, to promote our shit right. <laughs> when we leave. So wrapped it in J Rock stuff. <laughs> oh man, we outside. We outside. <laughs> hey, we took that thing on across the country two times. <laughs> oh, this is great. That's funny. 
That's great. You want when this I, to when be I got cool? Out of, when I got out of my deal, I don't think I took a promo man with me. <laughs> right? I should have fucking asked for a promo man. Or I took one. I don't think you asked. asked. Yeah, I don't think you asked. Yeah, yeah. You still got the keys? <laughs> right. You got the keys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Load that thing up with all them posters just showing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with them posters yeah, y'all putting up when we coming around here, put them in there too. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> hey, man. That but you know great. what, though? What we learned from that is we can't rely on nobody but us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So looking back at it, it was a blessing. Right. Mm -hmm. you know it was a teachable saying? moment. Hella teachable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because now Kendrick is bubbling, so we know what to do now. So he's bubbling right after you guys walk away from that deal? Yep. And and what what how is he bubbling? What is he on? What did he do? This is um so now this is the blog era. Mm hmm You know what I mean? So when you send the blogs your record, they do a write up on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Introducing you, letting people know who you are, where you from, and then they'll post a song mm -hmm. and people will go on there and comment. So that was the thing. So all the blogs start showing a lot of love at that point. Mm -hmm. So whenever we blast out a joint, everybody will post it everywhere. So we start getting a little traction that way. So now it's, we going straight to the people now. Yeah. As opposed to waiting on a record company to do something. Mm -hmm. And at this point, Kendrick is J-Rock's hype man. He going on the road with him, right? He was... I mean, I that's what... Technically, yes, but I mean, not I, really. He's an he's doing his own artist thing, but to yeah. put him on stages, right. he's on stage with Rock. See, the plan was we want to showcase Kendrick too. Okay, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because he building at the same time Rock building. Everything Rock going through, he's going through right next to him. Mm -hmm. So if Rock got a show, we have Kendrick do two songs in the middle of his set while hype manning too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he hype man it for Rock. Rock would go off. He'd do two records. Rock come back, and you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So that's how we 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 was running the thing. Yeah. So you can get familiar with him. It's very uh, Motownish. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Very very bad boyish. Very like just continuing to use the heat. Yeah. Just spill right on over. Absolutely. So this next thing spill right on over. Like. Yeah. I love that. Nah, for sure. That was the mm -hmm. the whole thing. Like, we a team. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even with Rock, like, Rock making his album, everybody's involved. Yeah. If they ain't got a, a chorus idea, oh, let me try this hook on your thing. All right, bet, do it. If somebody got a beat they got from somebody, all right, this might fit Rock for his album. Let's send it to him. Like, everything was, was team-oriented. Mm -hmm. Was it a thing where... Was it a thing where where it was like, okay, this is what's lined up right now, as you say that. Mm -hmm. Rock is lined up right now, so everything is rock. Right. Everybody, all hands on deck. We're, Absolutely. We're on rock time. Yep. That okay. was the uh that was the mindset because this was this is the motion we had at the at that point. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He had the record deal, he had the most buzz, so if he crack off, that's gonna open the door open for the everybody doors. else. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and as y'all putting these records out with Dot, mm -hmm. the blocks start taking to them. Right. And then y'all start working on Section 80? Um, yes. But even before that, though, I'm missing the section. Um, we'll start getting a lot of uh, interest when we went to the East Coast and we did a lot of uh, serious satellite freestyles, freestyles. and this and that. This is when you like, if you see old footage, it's us and uh, Nipsey up there. Hmm. So it's like he was on the same circuit. He'd be leaving the. Uh... Oh, shit. <clears throat> you said satellite. They picked up on my phone. <laughs> oh, no wild. way. Nigga. <laughs> These motherfuckers be listening, man. God <laughs> damn. That's crazy. <laughs> but when we were on Sirius, like, Nip would be leaving one of the shows. We'd be walking right in. And there's a few times that we intersected and they you know, freestyle together. Together. Man. Once people start seeing us doing that, they gained a little notoriety back here. You know what I'm saying? And that started happening around the same time the blog era was starting. Right. So everything was moving Because that's back when 
all media had to come through the East Coast. Right. You exactly. had to, you had to take that trip to New York. Yep. Mm-hmm. You like listen, we all remember that time. Yeah. People that's been really been in this industry. Yeah. But like you had to do your press run. Yeah. Absolutely. Or you had to do your label meetings. Mm-hmm. You had to go mm-hmm. to New York. You know what I mean? And that's when I got a lot of a lot of my connections. Like when we do the press run with uh Warner. Mm-hmm. My guy Richie Abbott, he was the publicist there and he was so cool. Like he was showing me the ropes while we were doing the press run. So he's introducing me to everybody in every spot too. So now when we go and it's not about rock, I can make these same phone calls yeah. and pull Schoolboy Q through and pull Ab Soul through. You know what I mean, before you know what I mean they started bubbling like they did. So what what made y'all decide to go to Interscope? Um, it wasn't more so Interscope, it was more so Dre. Dre. Okay. So the way that happened, um, quick story. Uh, I've been talking to a cat from Universal. And I'm like, yo, we got this kid, Kendrick Lamar. He coming, he this and that. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Nothing happened. Talked to him a few months later. Yo, this kid Kendrick is moving, bro. You know what I mean? I might want to try to do something. Like, yeah, I heard his name. You know I mean? Keep working. All right. So now Kendrick is hot a few months later. And I'm like, yo. He's like, man, I know your man hot. Yeah, I coming to New York anytime soon. I said, we ain't got no plans for it, but whatever, whatever. Dr. Dre said this nigga name on the radio on Power 106. Same exec called me. Hey, we want to fly y'all out right now. <laughs> 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 Can you get to the airport? At first, she right. was on right. y'all dog. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Now it was like, uh, how, many, how many tickets y'all need? Yeah, the yeah. flights is booked. Yeah, y'all can <laughs> get to the just airport. Say, just say your name. Say your name. They, yeah. they, they wait, no. Just you. say Bumpy Johnson when you get to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny how that, that switch. Yeah. Because this whole time, we had been pursuing. Right. Now it's right. transitioning yeah. to what we've been right. pursued. Yeah. yeah. Ain't man. it a difference? Oh, I feel a little different. Yeah, I feel way different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a filet mick now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Throw the yeah. truffle butt on Which that. Which I got yeah. that lobster Theodore. Right. I'll take that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Real it's called talk. Thermidor, but yeah, yeah, that Theodore. <laughs> what the fuck I'm talking about? That was exactly right. us. So that's bro. how the shit goes, so, so, though. So here's the question. When Dre is saying his name, uh-huh. is Dre involved any at that point or he, he just, just shot him out he just shot him out we hadn't met him yet you hadn't even met him yet nah wow. but um what made him shout him out there's a few different stories okay like a few different people said they told dre about kendrick right, yeah, right, right you know right. i'm the one <laughs> right yeah, 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 yeah right yeah, yeah yeah so however that happened through mm-hmm. some of them people like he ended up looking at his stuff and he liked it so he just happened to be doing a uh uh, interview with Big Boy, which he don't even do interviews, don't right? Right. right. Yeah, I think right. he was just starting to was he starting to push Kush at that time? I don't remember what he was doing, but he was interviewing, and they asked him about new artists. He's like this kid from a uh, Compton named Kendrick Lamar. Stock went up <laughs> instantly. The, the reason I asked that because when you say Dre, uh huh, um, I was trying to get Kendrick on a record, yeah, and. And my OG was like, no, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call Top, I'm gonna get it done. I was like, all right, cool. Right. This is right before, you know, right before the mayhem. Yeah. You for sure being pursued, but it hadn't, <laughs> yeah. it ain't go boom yet, right? Right, right? But it was there. Yeah. And I was like, I'm about to get this nigga. It's like, Tank is gonna cost, you know, it's gonna cost this man. I'm like, I think he's worth it. I think we give it to him. Right. He's like, all right, well, I'm gonna let him know. And I think maybe a couple of days had went by. And I was like, so what's the what's the word on Kendrick? <laughs> yeah, apparently Dre said he's not doing no more features. <laughs> <laughs> what does Dr. Dre have to do with this? <laughs> what does Dr. Dre have to do with this? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was I was Nick, money ready, song ready. Man. I'm about to get Kendrick Lamar. And you the were- pursuit has gotten to a point to where it's untouchable at this point. You weren't part of the plan, Chief. Good luck. <laughs> I wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. He is shut down. It is a wrap. Next time you see him, he'll be at an arena near you. So, 
Yeah, it got a little different. Oh, I got different fast. <laughs> so you go, do y'all take the trip to New York? Oh, absolutely. Y'all yeah. take the trip? Oh, man, we met with everybody, too. Like, they flew us out, and then put you, us yeah, in the hotel. Yes, yeah, I, yeah. Listen, I've been there. Don't get courted. One, lab, one, lab, one label <laughs> flies you out, the other labels find hey, out you're there. Listen, how much how much Del Frisco's do you want? Yeah. Bro, Del the Del Frisco's, Frisco's you yes. can give me. Bro, yeah, I was in the 4040 Club eating, yeah, eating yeah. red velvet cheesecake. Yeah. And, yeah, we had a ball. But it's like, we just wanted to see what, you know what I mean, what the thing was. What the hoopla mm -hmm. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, man. It was such a, a drastic difference from us saying, yo, we dope, to people saying, yo, y'all dope. Like, it's insane. So we met, man, I think we hit everybody. We hit Atlantic, we hit Warner, we hit Def Jam, did the Universal meeting, like all type of stuff. And this was all before we even went and sat down with Dre. Before you had even sat down with him. But yeah. so, so obviously something told y'all to hold off, though. Well, yeah, we wasn't going to move until we went and hollered at him, too. You know what I mean? Like, at this point, it ain't no need to rush. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We've been waiting for this long. Let's yeah. see what, what everybody's talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we end up, uh, Kendrick ended up going and writing some records for Dre. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and Section 80 is out at this point. Nah. No? We're working on Section 80. Working on it. Yeah, for sure. Because Section 80 was still an indie project, though, correct? Yes, but he was signed to Aftermath Interscope, too. But they were cool but we with We let him know that, yeah, yo, we yeah. doing this. Like, this one's still on us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And they was good with it. And that was one of the reasons why we actually said yeah to going with Dre, because... When we had a conversation, he was like, yo, I don't want to change nothing about what y'all doing. If it's something I can come in and help and enhance, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll do that. But other than that, y'all just keep moving how y'all moving. You know what I'm saying? If y'all need me, I'm here. I mean, Section AG Project, was that through Empire? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah, I think we we got their first platinum uh, yeah, record. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know I'm gonna make sure Random. We, you know Indian. the Bay Area. Yeah. Yeah. I mean we go all way. Do your thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, we just be trying to help. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Shout sure. out to my brother guys. We just be trying to help. Yeah. 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 Now that's that's dope. That's dope. And then so now you okay so you get you get to deal with Dre. Yep. Y'all shut down Tank's feature. <laughs> yeah. um, <it's> <laughs> We gotta get back to that, man. You gotta. <laughs> that that might have been cap, by the way. <laughs> that might have been cap, by the way. Uh, we ain't never turned down no bread. <laughs> <laughs> that might have got lost long. Somebody threw line, you off. Dog. Well, let's just re <laughs> we reignite the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you should have put down a deposit. It's a, I was trying. <laughs> man, that was funny. So you said, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you don't. Nope, you were going there. <clears throat> so from from that point. Now we're now we're trying to get into the first official release mm -hmm. at Interscope. Right. Well, nah, you know what? Before that, um we had did a situation with Tech Nine and uh Travis O'Gwen at Strange Music. I remember that. I do remember that. Because right. y'all was on y'all was on the road with E forty. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember that. And that right there was uh that was a big learning uh experience too, because I think they showed us how how to tour mm -hmm. and how to do merch because they they operation is the best I've ever seen in the music business. I still don't have a TDE. Hey, I've been <laughs> Top's been my friend for a really long time. Every time I see him, I say the same thing. You know, I got you. You're right. I Top, anything. I still don't got my, my hoodie. I would have a TDE hoodie on right now. Yeah. Probably with a little red hat on everything. I'd be fake Top up here. <laughs> I mean, I everything. You got to tell him to put you on uh, group chat with the merch dude. Come on, yeah. man. <laughs> we, want, we, want, we want some TDE merch here at RB yes, Money Podcast, yes, man. TDE merch. Nah, I'll make sure y'all good. So oh. y'all go on tour. Y'all on, on the road right. with Tech 9 mm -hmm. E-40. Yeah. And y'all are seeing, because this is the part that I'm paying attention to. All of the schooling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Over time. Yep. That you know was, what I mean? That was, man, that was so important. Um, again, just watching how these dudes work 
even the markets. Like they'll do the A markets, the B markets, then they'll go do the C market. So the C market is covering what they was doing in the B market. Hmm. So it's pretty much all money in. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that they 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 met that the touring was was really a uh, a thing that we took to heart and put it in, incorporated in what we do. And that's how you really establish artists. Yeah, that role and build up real fan bases. Absolutely, most people ain't going to Des Moines. Exactly, especially urban artists. Yeah. Yep, real talk. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. People skip uh, uh, even a major <clears throat> city. People skip over Phoenix. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the urban space, for sure, R and B definitely don't go there. You right. know what I mean? And that's tough. And I, Tag and I speak to a lot of people who are like, "Yo, when are y'all coming?" At? Like, bro, won't nobody. The booking yeah. out here are the, and it's right, it's right next door. Yeah. But then also stopping in Fresno. Yep. Stopping in Bakersfield. Absolutely. All the markets. Like people Taking really them overlook in, in Modesto. Yeah, because they think that everybody's just gonna go to Oakland. Right. Or people gonna go to Sac. Real talk. Instead of saying, no, 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 I'm going to come to where you are and just do the smaller venue, mm-hmm. sell that out. Where were we at in uh, for the tour? Where do we go? Uh, the Northern California? The, yeah, the casino. Sacramento. We were Sacramento? on the outside of Sacramento. We were on the outside, we were on the outside of Sacramento. Because mm-hmm. I asked you, I was like, is people, yeah. going, is people yeah. coming here? <laughs> He's like, hell yeah, people coming here. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. We were that, outside of Sacramento. That jank was sold out. I'm like, yeah, buddy. Okay, all right. Because I'd never been there. Right. And but I'm also a guy that's like, <clears throat> I'll go. Yeah, yeah. Wheatland. That's what Wheatland. they call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wheatland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right outside the sack. I'll yeah. go anywhere. And what's crazy is those people would be the most turned. Mm-hmm. Oh, they was going up. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't get to see people all yeah. the time. And mostly they're people from the major cities who move there for either better right. life, get a bigger bigger house out there. Yeah. It's, it's more quiet. Mm-hmm. Sometimes your money go bad. You got <laughs> to get gotta somewhere go. where you it's more to, affordable. You got to go know, to Corona. I, I've been there. <laughs> 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 you got to go there your, before the Corona build up, though. Yeah, you got to go where your money stretch a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. Stretch a, I, listen, I was stretching in Rancho Cucamonga and Corona. <laughs> I was the king. Yeah. You wouldn't be king. The voice cracking. Like it's cracking down. It's cracking down. There's crackin down. Crackin down. Lambos and shit out there now. They done figured me out. That's funny. Yeah, no, I've, 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 I remember, I remember a, a show I did in, in Fresno. Did you say Fresno? Mm-hmm. In this club. Yep. The club hold like about three or four hundred yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, remember that mm-hmm. show? Remember that? Yeah. And I say crazy. Yeah. Well, remember Marcus right? Anthony was like, "Nigga, it's gonna be crazy." Because <laughs> he from Fresno. It was a zoo in there. Yeah. I remember that show like it was yesterday to this day. Yeah, yeah. It had the oh, upstairs and downstairs yep. before and downstairs. Yeah, yep. I remember it. That's how it go, man. Because again, these people don't get people that just come there all the time. So when you in their town, mm-hmm. they want to go and have a blast, mm-hmm. and they party like they ain't never seen you before. Mm-hmm. So is that something that, as an executive, that you push to your artists? That you like when you having your conversations about brand building, about mm-hmm. building out their fan bases? Like, listen, it may not be sweet all the time, and it may not be the biggest venues or the biggest cities sometimes, but these are the people that will hold you up. Oh, a thousand percent. Remember the first show we did with Kendrick? It was like eight people in there, bro. No way. Literally like eight people, not including the 12 we bought. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hmm. Still rock. What's Still up. It? it was in Long Beach. Hmm. Yeah. So we went in. I mean, the stage was about the size of this table right here. Well, it was whatever. Like, Rehearsal. Let's get to yeah. it. And these, they, if they have, a f- have fun, they going to tell people. Yeah. And that's how you build it. Like, they tell people and they tell people and they bring folks and you got a fan base. Yeah. I think that's also a lost art. It's like with the phone, everybody makes it seem like, you know, as soon as you pop out, right. it's a thousand people there. Yeah. Because, or they give the allure. Because these, mm-hmm. this is the other part about mm-hmm. that. They introduce, in my opinion, they introduce urban artists to the festival mm. very early. Mm. Yeah, F- a festival used to be something that you had to be really established to get on. Yeah. Right yeah. now, you can have one record and they'll put you on a festival show, a festival. which is kind of crazy. Yeah, 
Because back in the day, they might the DJ might play your song at the festival to yeah. get the crowd going. Now they're actually paying you to show up to do that one song. Well, it's, and it's great for them because they're getting the energy, the sale, the whatever mm-hmm. of the one record. Yeah. But they're crippling you as a hard ticket selling artist. Right. Well, that's the thing, though. Mm-hmm. Like, when you say with festivals, to me... If you unknown, that's the opportunity to go gain some more fans. Mm-hmm, for of course. One. But you can't confuse that with your hard ticket sales, like you said. Because you'll go do a show and nobody will show up. And you do a festival and the whole tent full. That's because it's a thousand other God, artists on this bill. Yep. And people yeah. are floating around yep. to see what's what. Yep. So if you're there and you got one song, rock out. Right. And kill it and try to gain some more fans. Mm-hmm. So when you do your hard ticket show... Some people might show up for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just it's just like the idea of <clears throat> you hitting that festival stage. Right. And then having to come to terms <laughs> yeah, right. with them seven people, the eight people in that yeah. venue. Like yeah. and that is a reality. I, I didn't know nothing about no festival. So I was never, mm. you know, programmed yeah. to to believing that that would be a reality for me. Well, right. the one thing that did kind of I had to kind of get used to was I had been singing backgrounds with Genuine and Aaliyah. Yeah. In arenas. Right. <laughs> and then they would call me out to sing a little solo and the, yeah. the screams was crazy. I'm right. Like, those must be my screams. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't your no, no, those the the nigga with Genuine screams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't even know my name. You heard that nigga with Genuine? That nigga was all right. Yeah, that nigga with Genuine. <laughs> That's hilarious. But when it was my turn, I was for sure you know, I was prepared to thug it out and thug it out. I had to in a van, right, with everybody and the, the crew and the equipment. Exactly. Like, like I did, I did a dirt floor with <laughs> yeah. with two mics, one mic for me and one mic for my background singers, yeah. and it was both on short cords. <laughs> yeah. And I still took my shirt off. Yeah, absolutely. And I laid on that dirt floor and <laughs> no sang way. my song. No way. You laid absolutely. on the floor. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Fuck my little outfit up. <laughs> yeah. Got on my knees. <laughs> Nigga thought he was a little male fit or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Yeah. Them 32 people in that place felt me. Absolutely. I'm sure they talk about it. I'm sure they still it. talk about it, right. And as you say that, I'm just like, that's just a lost art. It of is. just getting back to the streets. That you, you, know, you know what it be too though? It's a lot of ego involved. Mm-hmm. So to go out there and there's only a few people out there, like that's not a comfortable feeling for a lot of people. Yeah. Especially if you don't have that mindset where I got to turn these 20 people up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because how artists are presented, again, kind of like what you was mentioning, they presented to be stars already. Mm-hmm. When that's not, it's not the, the real case. thing. It's not at all. It's not the case. Even like with the artists we got, right? Like the first four dudes, that promo van I'm telling you about, literally followed game on tour across the country in that promo van. Hmm. It's, it's 15 of us in that van. You know what I'm saying? Opening up for, for game during his tour, his LAX tour. Mm-hmm. I made it onto that album. I did get it almost Kendrick Fisher. <laughs> oh, yeah, you were on that album. See No Evil. Yeah, yeah you were on right. Game called yeah. me said, I got, I got to put you on one. That's hard. I got one. I got one with you and Kendrick. I said, me and who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the way. <laughs> but like, so the new artists that come after that, mm-hmm. they coming into an established situation. Yeah. So now they can hop right in on the tour bus. So they don't know the struggle yeah, that we that. built and went through. Tank and I have that conversation all the time, bro. Yeah. Because he, like, I am a, and for anybody who's watched the podcast, they'll say this, like, I'm a reminder of that to people. I'm Absolutely. like, hey, nigga, yeah. I slept on the floor. Yeah. Tank be like, yeah, yeah, chief, but you know, they ain't got to sleep on the floor no more. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, there's, and there's something to, to building, it's building up tough skin. Absolutely. Yeah. To dealing with this shit. This yep. shit. And understanding that, hey man, it's mm-hmm. gonna get ugly sometime in here. Absolutely. What are you going to do? Yeah, real talk. When you're faced with that. Yeah. My thing is, I'm gonna remind you just so you understand. Mm-hmm. And I want you to be grateful 
for the position that you're in. Can you say grateful one more time? Yeah. Because that is, is not that is not a thing. Not a right. Thing. Exactly. In, especially not in the music business. No. Yeah. People being grateful. Yeah, they feel old. Right. Like nobody owes you anything. That's real talk. I going back, I chose to sleep on that floor. Yep. I could have stayed my ass in the bay. Mm-hmm. I could have did whatever hustling I was doing back home yeah. in my comfortable bed. I was right. like, you know what? I'm going out here to make a life for myself. Right. So in doing that, there's no furniture in that room. <laughs> exactly. But that room is connected into a house that has a studio. Mm. Yeah. That at any point in, in, of the night, I could walk my black ass over there you go in, yeah. and start writing these songs. Yeah. Real talk. So that I can try to change my life. Yeah. Yeah, and that, I am grateful it builds, for it, that. It built so much character, bro. You know what I mean? Like I remember <laughs> we had All Star Weekend. Like we all drove down, but no, that's, we that's definitely a time where you realize you not that you're poor, <laughs> bro. Because there's so many rich niggas at All Star. <laughs> man, we had the that the flamingo ten niggas in one room. Woo! You got to sleep. The Vegas All Star Weekend. Yes, yeah, that Sheesh. year when niggas was when niggas had a side show. Hey. That year, <laughs> hey, it was up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It was niggas galore. <laughs> oh man, y'all was ten. Well, we ten in deep in, in one room. Yeah. God. So it was like niggas sleep sitting up in the chair. Somebody yeah. sleep in the bathtub. Like you get in where you fit in. Yeah, we yeah. out here working. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of artists don't understand that. And haven't been through that. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of see it sometimes in their hunger level. Yeah. You know what I mean? But them reminders, though, that they're healthy. I, I think the thing that I've seen from the outside, and you can speak on this because it's your company, uh-huh. I feel like everybody that I know of that I've seen, they got to earn their shit oh, yeah. at TDE. Absolutely. Like... <laughs> Even when y'all do y'all initial deals, mm-hmm. it's like, all right, we're going to give you the opportunity. We're going to give you a deal. We're going to put some money in your pocket. But this is not you're a star today. Right. You're not You're not Schoolboy Q today. You're not J-Rock mm-hmm. today. You're not Kendrick Abso. Scissor. You are brand new. Right. Real talk. So we're going we gonna to help you get your buzz going. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to figure out where we're going to take it. Yep. Cause that's the other thing, and if you know, and if I'm getting too deep into how y'all do y'all business, but <laughs> nah, you good. How y'all license deals mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. more so than it is y'all doing label partnerships, yeah, or you know what I mean? Like y'all are fully owners of TDE. Mm-hmm. There is no code this with this company, that company. Nah, nah it's uh, it's. Just- you know, it's just part, real partnerships. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, the scissor deal, the first one we did with, with RCA, it was a licensing deal. I think it was like, at the time, was kind of one of its kind. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was kind of the transition when people started breaking away from the giving Draconian. away everything. Mm-hmm. For Jack Conley. Okay. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we just try to, we just try to push the envelope. You know what I mean? Try to try to break new ground. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, again, the rules of this business are so old. And we still living by these same old standards. Like, we're not even in that time period no more. Mm-hmm. So the deals need to be updated. Yeah. And switched around. So that's what we try to we try to push the envelope on that. So when you go from, you did the mm-hmm. Warner deal, you, now you do the Interscope deal. Now you got the shout out from Dr. Dre. Yeah. Um he he uh he shuts down my feature. <laughs> I'm gonna text him when we leave about <laughs> that. Um when is the moment where you guys as as a label, as guys who've been trying to crack the code? Because now you know the deals are one thing. Getting a deal done is one thing. Right. But actually feeling like you're headed towards somewhere really successful and even seeing some fruits of that labor is something completely different. Yeah, for sure. When when is that turn for you guys? For me, that happened um, before all of that, actually. Okay. This happened in uh, 2010 when we put out the uh, Kendrick Lamar LP. 
Mm-hmm. No, EP, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So one of the songs we did on there is a song called Faith. With, I'm on it with Kendrick and uh, BJ. You're uh, on it. Yeah. Tell them, yeah. Tell, them, tell them what you're doing on it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Bars. Yeah, bars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talking a little bit. Don't he, get it twisted. Yeah, yeah. Because they just think he'd be on Twitter. No, no, no. He, <laughs> he knows because he does it. Yeah, I mean, he yeah, has yeah. punch on Twitter. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But now nah, we, we was doing a, um, so that's out. And we doing a, a in-store in Carson at a, Ab Soul's uh, grandfather record shop. So, you know, a crowd of people come and this young lady came up to uh, Kendrick. And I'm standing right there and she was like, yo, this song stopped me from, I mean, harming myself. And at that moment, I'm like, oh, this is bigger than just recording records. We're actually affecting people's lives. Hmm. So I figured we had a bigger purpose at that point. And if it infects enough people, then it'll pay off in other ways as well. Yeah. But that's the goal now. You know mm. what I'm saying? We want to do something that helps somebody at the end of the day. So that's the moment when I realized, okay, this could really go somewhere, somewhere mm. big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And it wasn't about... It wasn't about what everybody else would think it was about. Not at all. It was more so about some human being of service. Yeah, being yeah. of service. Yeah, absolutely. We have something that that is going to, like, like you said, it's going to help. Right. Because that's mm-hmm. that 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 thought process is 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 way more long term, right? Mm-hmm. And you have to be willing to to stand in that gap for a long time. Yep. to see the impact of what you've put in. Yeah. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's trying to everybody's trying to get something out. Getting something out, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody's trying to that, re- put their hand in the bowl. Yeah. A perfect segue to mm-hmm. I mean cuz I'm I'm going to be one of the fans now. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Why I be taking y'all so long? <laughs> 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 to put these damn albums out, punch. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm one of y'all now, Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I'm asking, yeah. punch. I think he kind of explained it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. like, y'all y'all move at y'all own pace. Yeah, absolutely. Y'all have not let the success speed y'all up. Yeah. I've seen so many people, and it's very tough. It's a really tough spot that y'all in. Right. Because people are always like, you got to strike when the when it's hot. When the iron is hot. You got to yeah. do this when it's this. It's all, but everything they're talking about is fast tracking. Mm-hmm. Right? Which leads to the product not being as good. Right. Mm. You know, it's funny. I had a conversation with uh with Jay-Z. <laughs> yeah. And we was talking. I never had one of those. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Just Ooh, go, go ahead. Man. You, know what I mean? you know what I mean? You know what I mean? One yeah. thing after yeah. another. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's my guy. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> but Go now, ahead, man. The champagne's pouring. It's okay. <laughs> but now we, we were in the studio talking, and he was like, uh, I think the new Ninja Turtle movies that came out at the time. Mm-hmm. He was like, Man, the Ninja Turtles can come out and do 300 million. That's not going to get Tarantino to change the script. And that always stuck with me. Because I'm like, No matter what's hot and what's going on, it's not going to move me to change how I'm moving. Mm-hmm. It's not going to change my direction on the goal. And the goal is quality music. Yeah. Regardless to anything, like, we want to be honest and we want to give you quality. Whatever happens from there happens. So as far as taking long, I look at it as we give an artist the space to create something great. So it's not, we're not on nobody else's timetable. Once the artists feel, okay, I'm ready, then we're going to be ready and we're going to go. But that's also a part of y'all having real ownership. Oh, for sure. Right? Because yeah. if you're, if you're, you'll be pressured on this you, release man. schedule, yeah. right? You're pressured into, hey, man, we gave y'all mm-hmm. this amount of money. Yeah. And we need to meet these numbers by this next quarter. So we're going to need a Kendrick album or a Scissor album or a Schoolboy album, yeah, a rock course. album. Absolutely. Now, we need one 
every quarter or we need one. You know what I mean? So, but with you guys maintaining See, no, who you were. The thing with that is we got good partners that trust us too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they get antsy. I mean, it's about market share and, and the whole nine, but they also understand when we put out a product, people usually relate to it and it gets some movement going. So it's not like, yo, we need this or else. It's like, all right, we trust y'all, do y'all thing. So it's never a, a, it's never any contention there. No no real contention. We have conversations, yeah, I know. It's taking it's taking a minute, but you know, trust me. Yeah. What happened last time when we took a minute? Right. So and but that's just, how it used to be though. Yeah, yeah. But even even who you guys chose to make your your partner mm -hmm. once you start bubbling. Is another guy who takes his time. Mm -hmm. Dre said, don't, no, don't nobody tell Dre. Yes. <laughs> don't nobody tell Dre when huh. he's supposed to put something out. Absolutely. So he understands too, mm -hmm. though. And mm -hmm. I think that is a very important thing. Someone asked me the other day, is something completely different about. Hold on, before you change, start, let me clear up a misconception for one. What's that? Uh, we put out albums every year for 15 years. Okay. Before we got this rep of we take too long. You know what I mean? You like, did? Uh, you did? Absolutely. <laughs> Go back and look. But From, he he's saying TDE right. put out something every year. He's I not, see how you did yeah, that. I yeah, see what he yeah, did yeah. there. But even yeah. like if you take Kendrick, for example, right? He got a lot of flack because it was a five-year gap mm -hmm. between his last two albums. So from damn back, it's every year and a half. It's an album coming out. You know, if you add six months five times, <laughs> <laughs> that's, two, right. that's two and a half years, right? And what people what, also what people don't account for is we was in a global pandemic. You so, know what? So, you moving the goalposts. No, you, I'm saying you said, everything. You talking down. about moving the goalposts earlier? It sounds. It sounds good. This is real. Sounds really good. What he he writes lyrics. He does, yeah. <laughs> this guy's talented. Oh, no, this yeah. is this yeah. is real talk. Trust me. But nah, it's 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 a, it's a real misconception. Like the last two, it was gaps mm -hmm. because of whatever reason. But before that, it was back to back. It was constant. Yeah, for years. So, but I guess as you know, what have you done for me lately? No, for sure. You know that, that's what so, this industry is. They yeah. want to scroll and see it. Right. Exactly. But yeah. what I was what I was what I was saying though too was that being mindful of the partners. Yeah. Right, because you could have also gotten into a deal with one of the companies that flew y'all out, mm -hmm. and it maybe don't work that way because they see it, they they get antsy, and they don't understand artist sensibilities. Yeah, mm -hmm. they don't understand the way that Dre understands it. Yep, and have the power that he has within his own system and mm -hmm. his own building to say, hey, hey, man. Yeah, no, 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 no. We trust yeah. these guys. Real mm -hmm. talk. Let them do what they do. Yep. And I think because sometimes people rush into, you know, when they getting all that attention. Yeah. And those shiny, you know, those those numbers. Yep. And now they're just signed to somebody who really don't understand who they are. Nah, that's real. But again, remember, when I, when I go back to what I said, the reason we even signed with Dre in the first place, that conversation, he said, mm -hmm. I don't want to change nothing y'all doing. Right. He just want to help if yeah. I can. Right. And he stuck by his word. So, but even further, like even outside of Dr. Dre stuff, even the partnerships that we have with RCA, it's the same situation. You know what I mean? But, you know, we have a track record, we have a brand and a whole thing that everybody respects. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we respect their time as well. So it, it, it works to where there's never really any, any issues. Absolutely. It's a great that's that's a great way to now bring up your R and B side. Because yeah. now we're talking about RCA. Come on. Yeah. And at RCA. You're right too. <laughs> there's this phenomenon. Mm. Yes, sir. Her name is SZA. Mm. Yes, sir. And this is the R and B Money Podcast. Mm. So we like to now jump into mm -hmm. just you guys have established yourself at this point as a powerhouse rap label. Right. Even if that's not the, you know, the intention, mm -hmm. it's just what happens. It's the music business. Everything is about boxes that nobody wants to be in. Of course. But now you're in that box. You're West Coast, gangster rap, <laughs> all those things. Right. Just 
this is what they do. Yep. Then y'all hit a full, <laughs> a full turn. Yeah. And say, you know what? We're going to sign an R&B artist that's not from the coast. Mm-hmm. And it's a woman. Yep. What's the what's the thought process into that? That's exactly what the thought process was for me personally. So I'm looking at what we're doing. So we established, we got J-Rock, we got Kendrick, we got Schoolboy Q popping on the radio now. We got Ab Soul, that's everybody's favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Mm-hmm. J-Rock got his joint out. We established now. We're, mm-hmm. we're a hip-hop rap label. Yeah, y'all, y'all cracking. So my mindset was like, all right, I want to branch out and see if we can become a dominant music label. And that was my mindset, moving with SZA. Because that's not something that is normal either, though. Right. Right? Because like you said, becoming a music label. Yeah. Most hip-hop labels in my opinion, they don't really know how to make that transition. Right. Because him and I talk about this all the time. The radio department is different. Mm-hmm. The, you know, it's not, you're not servicing the same DJs. Truth. Like you, it's a whole nother game. It is. See, but one of the advantages, right? What attracted me to her was she approached her songs as an MC. Okay. You know what I mean? As opposed to a traditional R&B singer or just a singer in general. Like she approached it as an MC. Like I'm listening to the words and the metaphors and the stuff she's saying. I'm like, oh, I know what this is. I'm familiar with this. Mm-hmm. Cause like I said, we got four hard hitters. So it was just a matter of, of, of transition, transitioning that in. So what are we doing? Where do you find a scissor? How do you find Man, it was all, say, this is the one? <laughs> bro, it was all accident, actually. Kendrick had a show in uh in Brooklyn. And I remember this because this was exactly a year before Good Kid Mad City dropped. So it was a year to the day, October 22nd, 2011. So He's doing a show and she's helping out one of her friends behind the merch booth. So, you know, I'm trying to get some merch. They ain't have my size. They had all, all little nigga sizes. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know, we exchanged info with her. Or my guy exchanged info with her. And uh, she was going to meet us the next day and bring sizes or whatever. So she pulled up the next day with one of her friends and we meet in, uh, in the hotel lobby. So we just sitting there, we chopping it up, and her friend has these uh these earphones in. And she's just kind of like in her own zone, just bobbing her head. So I'm getting distracted while I'm talking. I'm like, yo, what are you listening to? And she was like, This her. You ain't know she's sing. I'm like, what? I said, let me hear it. So I listened. And like, it was crazy. Like her voice caught me right off top. So I'm like, yo, that's crazy. She said she wasn't going to say nothing, but I don't know if that was a setup or what. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you. like, So you be bobbing. Like, <laughs> right. Just, yeah. You got a vibe. You be having, yeah. you got a vibe. I'm going to be over here with these t-shirts doing. and I'm shit. A, I'm going to yeah. try to act like right. I'm not what you listening to. Just do you. Right. But apparently this was one of the first real songs that she actually recorded. So she had did some stuff before. She had messed around on hooks with friends or whatever. But mm-hmm. like, that's her first real record. Like, I think this was the second one she did. So from there, we um we kept in contact. And, you know, she'd send me stuff she was working on. And we'd talk back and forth. I would, you know, give advice and this and that. So that went on for two years hmm. before, I mean, we actually decided we we're going to work together. So, so has she been even shopping stuff to no, label anything? No, no. No? Uh-uh. It was more so just around New York, around the cool kids in mm-hmm. New York at the time. And um, because literally that song I heard was a part of her first EP. 
So that was Shit. the first thing that she ever put out to the public. Mm -hmm. So I was already kind of on board at that point. You know what I mean, as far as... Just on some consulting with her, right. helping her. Exactly. So I was in New York one time. We met up and her manager had just quit. I said she didn't want to work with her no more. I was a fumble, but... <laughs> yeah. 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 She, we talking. She's like, you know what? You should just manage me. I'm like, hey, you know what? <laughs> You're right. Let's do it. Because you already believing in it. Yeah, for sure. See, but I didn't want to like push or, you know what I mean? Because she had her thing she was trying to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm just respectful of that. And when, you know, she needed advice or whatever, then I lean in. But once that opened up, it was like, all right, bet. Let's go. So, so was how's that the, the moment that made it? Yeah. Yeah. Push through. Like, okay. Absolutely. Now, nah, okay. 100%. How is the conversation... With Top, though. Or does he already know about her? Nah. Nah, he didn't know about her. Um, I was actually strategic about it. I know this dude so well. So I went around the camp first. <laughs> we had her music. So <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. You put the headphones, you put the headphones up. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you listen to? I'll just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I let Dave hear it first. Mm-hmm. Dave liked it. Because Dave the first person that, that told me about SZA. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's crazy. Yeah. So I let him hear it first. He liked it. Then I let Musa hear it. Musa liked it. Then I went to Top. No, I let Kendrick hear it too. So everybody loved the music. Mm -hmm. And then I hit Top. I'm like, yo, got this new artist I think we should mess with. He was like, yeah. Anybody heard it yet? I said, yeah, Dave heard it. Musa heard it. Kendrick heard it. It's like, oh, dope. It's like, man, you seen her perform live yet? She got a show in Brooklyn coming up. I'm going to fly out there with Dave. Oh, you had the full set up. Oh, I was ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, all right, bet. And he heard the music and he liked it. So then once we flew out there, we surprised her. She didn't know it was coming. She did her set or whatever, and it was locked in from there. I was like, what, 12 years ago? Oh. <laughs> Yeah. It was a learning curve though, bro, because again, I'm coming working with four dudes. Mm -hmm. So now it's this woman. Way different. Oh my God. I always tell a story um, with the fellas. I can say, yo, we got an interview in 10 minutes. They just get up and wipe their eyes and hop right on camera. Oh, yeah. It's called Glam. Bro, I tried that with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yo, we got to do this little MTV thing mm -hmm. like 30 minutes. She lost her whole head. <laughs> it was insane. Need, need, need 20, 48 to 28, uh, 24 hour prep. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they, they started at 5, 6 in the morning. In the morning. It was insane. For the day of press that don't start till noon. Come on now. Right. Come Real talk. Now. So it's like I'm learning like all of this stuff on the fly now. Mm -hmm. Making all type of mistakes and oh man, you gotta hurry up before a show to go buy tampons and that's a whole different thing. I'm talking to hair people now. I'm talking to people about skincare. Yeah, you know what bundles are now, bro. <laughs> we went they out here somewhere to get years. bundles. I ain't gonna lie. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they make money too. What? <laughs> yeah, like they want what? Yeah, yeah, yeah they want it. Huh, twenty five hundred for and what? it's a different what, what it? and it's a different expense. It is sober, cause dudes, you know, again, jeans, t shirt, and we good. Yeah, right? Jays and a hat. Yeah, we good. If yeah. you know, if if you're really feeling good about yourself, throw a chain on. You right. got a chain? Yeah, you got a chain. Put a you, chain you on. Got your homeboy chain. <laughs> Gotta take your outfit up a few. Right. Yeah. A woman that that Man. that fit, bro. No, everything, everything. So again, so imagine like how my mind is just expanding now because all of these new things mm -hmm. that I got to learn in real time. Did you ever feel like I'm a fish out of water and I don't know? Like, like almost, am I holding her back from a, from a management standpoint, right? Because, they, mm. you know, I, I talk about it when I first started managing Tank. Yeah. 
I just asked a lot of questions. I asked a whole bunch of questions. Right. I was never the guy to act like I just knew something. Right. Like he'll, he'll say that. He'd be like, Jay will be like, I'm going to call you right back, Tank, because I'm going to go find it out. See. I just, I, I never wanted <laughs> to be the nigga that was fronting, bro. I just didn't yeah. want to be him. I'm the smartest guy in the room all the time. Hey, man, right. I don't know this. Hey, can you help me? Yeah. Like, but you coming from this this other world. Right. Into a completely different world and with a, a woman. Yeah. Did you ever feel like, shit, am I in the way of of where this thing is going because I don't know some of this shit? No, nah, I ain't never felt that way because I know what the goal was. Mm -hmm. The goal was to get her to the people. Okay. If I can get her to the people, however that may be, then I think we're going to be good. So that was always my mindset. Even when I didn't know something or whatever, like I give her a lot of credit because she knew a lot of different things as far as marketing, who to market to, with uh, outlets that she, she understood her fan bases. Oh, absolutely, thousand percent. So with that plus, I mean, my experience already, like, I never felt like I was a fish out of water. Mm. Like, yo, we just got to get these people to hear you. Once they hear you, we good money. Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. My my daughter. <laughs> now, y'all, I I want to say that SZA is the only artist that. I've ever had to like make that phone call for, yeah, for tickets. That's crazy. I can always find out. Like oh, I'll figure this out. But like one of my guys who is you know a, a close guy for me, man, that that really be you know making sure I'm straight with my train my son do some other stuff for me with 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 the basketball side of it. Called me, yeah. And y'all ticket was impossible. Impossible. <laughs> like the only way to get. A scissor ticket was to call y'all. Yep. Right. And I just didn't want to call Top. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Cause not about that. You know what I'm saying? Like right, this is my right, friend. Right. Like, you know what I mean? I don't wanna be yeah. I don't wanna be that guy. Right, right. Cause I know how that is sometimes when guys gotta call me about shit like that. And it's mm -hmm. like, ah, that's fuck, this is like a super <laughs> sold out show. <laughs> right. <laughs> super sold out. In a market that you don't ask for tickets in. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. in Atlanta. Right, yeah. right, yeah. A scissor ticket in Atlanta, my yeah, nigga, yes. will get you free bundles. Super <laughs> sold out. Right. It'll get you free bundles, bro. Straight up. Yep. And my guy called me and I was like, fuck, I can't tell him no. Mark is my guy. I can't tell him no. Right. I called Top. I'm like, Top. <laughs> Need you, yeah. <laughs> need you, and, man. And he was, and it was, you know, I was. He made it easy because you know that's my guy. So he's like, I, I got you. Yeah. But then they get to the concert, and the people at Will Call is acting like the name ain't there. Right. So what do I got to do? Call I got to go on top. top again. This is below <laughs> his pay grade, man. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, funny. I'm calling the, the, the man that's worth four, five hundred million dollars and asking him about four tickets. We'll call. <laughs> say, I, I don't feel like know. an asshole. Who's handling will call for you, yeah. man? Because uh, we lost. <laughs> we don't know what to do. Oh, that's funny. And but you know, Toby and Toppy, he, he took care of it for me. He, he's like, nah, it's good. It's good. I got you. And yeah. he made the phone call and got it taken care of for me. But it was just like... Mm. That's why I hate having to call people and ask for that type of shit. Cause it's I don't want to be calling top, calling punch about no damn tickets, <laughs> damn to, show. I, listen, I at had six. to call. It was my daughter. I had to. Yeah, she was losing her mind. That's right. And and I needed to be dad of the year. Absolutely. I had to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put in my call and then I was talking to Kaiser on the phone. I was like, yeah, man, just you know, just trying to. Figure out the scissor thing. He said, "Well, have you talked to our good friend? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to him. You know, but if you want to talk to him too, <laughs> you want to reinforce it. I'm gonna call him on three right now." That was what, 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 what Kanye said? Get top on the phone. Right. That's funny. It was a great line because that's really a thing. Man, Get top on thing. the phone is a thing. Absolutely. Let me ask you a question because as as I was tracking scissor, mm -hmm. of course she was. She was on track to be where she is. Right. Um, but it felt like it felt like she went from like if we put it on a scale of a hundred, mm -hmm. it felt like she went from forty five to a hundred. Yeah. 
in a very short period of time. Like if we're equating it to venues, she went from theaters to sold out yeah. arenas. Yeah. One project changed in, that. Yeah. In, in one, yeah. like, I was like, what happened? Yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nah, it was, uh, we had some discussions because, again, so we coming out of the pandemic, and then her album before that was in 2017. Mm -hmm. So we was kind of, we didn't know for sure where she was with hard tickets. Because, mm -hmm. again, the CTRL tour, that was 2,500 to 3,500 yeah. people, maybe. Yeah. So we were going to do smaller venues at first but then i just like the harassment online to how bad people wanted this album like you know what maybe we should you know what i mean step it up and top made the call he's like yo let's just do arenas so all right let's go let's see what happens put them on sale they blew out instantly let's just do arenas <laughs> So y'all jump from y'all jump from twenty five hundred to seventeen thousand, twenty thousand. Yeah. Sheesh. Wow. And this is before the new album. At the time that y'all it came on sale after the new album dropped. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the album dropped in December. I think we went on sale in February, maybe. Golly. Yeah. That's what it do when you you take your time. Right. Quality. You make you make the right Quality. music. Quality. Mm -hmm. And you make, bro, because that 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 leads me to this. Kill Bill, yeah. You love that song. <laughs> he, lo he he's he Kill loves Bill fucked the, me up. Right, the intricacies of like he's, yeah. he's dissecting the record. There you know it, there aren't very many records that I've ever listened to and felt fear. <laughs> Because Tank will tell you, I'm just I'm not a fearful person. Right. I've I've seen some wild shit in my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not the nigga you jump out the bushes and try to scare. Right. I'm like, come on now. You right, almost right, got right. yourself shot. You oh, know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm that guy. Like, I don't I'm listening to this song. Uh -huh. Because like he said, I'm a guy, I'm going to dissect and listen to lyrics. I was like, fuck. Right. That was my that was my reaction. Fuck. Yeah. Did you hear what she just said? You know, you know the illest part about that record? She wrote it in like 20 minutes. That's scary. <laughs> that's scary. <sighs> right. Because that's the type of shit going through yeah, her head. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> that it's right there at the front oh, of Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, oh, buddy. My... Bro, as a I'm man. Uh-huh. Listening to that type of record, you say to yourself, hey, man, don't hey. be playing. Because hey. some of these girls ain't playing. But you know what's ill? That's her gift. Her mm -hmm. gift is to say the things that people thinking. Right. But won't necessarily say out loud. They may be mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. She's a voice. So to say I'm, I might kill my ex. Yeah. Like, how many girls really thought that, but just ain't never said it out right. loud? And ain't typed it on, <laughs> right. you know, on on the socials, but now they got a song to refer to yeah. to give them the gas. So, when the album was, uh, when we was playing it for certain people, like, we would play it for the uh, DSPs and different And rumors are people. that you would play them. Yeah, right. She wouldn't go. Nah. She like, I'm cool. Yeah. Tell me what they said. Everybody react to that song. Like all the girls that come up, all of the, the interns who were sneaking in listening. Yeah. Come up to me right after they love that song. Say, hey, you relax. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't you go do nothing. Yeah, hey, listen. The motivator. <laughs> right. <laughs> but like killing X is Saturday. Who is <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that was the reaction like every time I did a playback. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh yeah, this gonna kill him when it drop. Literally, <laughs> literally. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. But then even the the actual songwriting, it's special, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's special. Yeah. It's special. Like, you can tell that it's a true gift, right? 
This isn't this isn't like, oh yeah, we, you know, teaching somebody strong song structure and then we figured out how to right. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. As as wild as it sounds, you telling me she wrote that in twenty minutes yeah. makes perfect sense. No, absolutely. Because when you got that type of gift, mm-hmm. the shit flows. It's like we had Robin Thick on the show. Right. And he's talking about the first time he heard, you know, Lost Without You, that was it was immediate. Yep. Started singing the hook. Yeah. As soon as he heard the guitars. Oh, this is this. Yeah. It, it it should be. The music is that way though. Yeah. When it's right. Everything is just right. It just it just happens just like that. And what's crazy is when she get in that bag right there mm-hmm. to when it just works so easy, she don't think the song good. Because hmm. she's like, I, I'll do that. This is simple. It's too easy for her. It's too easy. This can't be it. It's too easy. I didn't. I didn't. Right. Same, so, same thing with Snooze. <laughs> it was the same exact way. So where do you stand as the executive, as, you know, as in a sense, the vessel that that helps it get to where it's supposed to be, right? To where mm-hmm. it gets to the people. Yeah. When she thinks maybe it's not that good, mm-hmm. where do you stand on like almost fighting somebody about yeah. their art to yeah. say no, 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 no. Oh yeah, that's when we have our most arguments for sure. Doing picking picking the records, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because She's viewing it usually as the songs that she like. Mm-hmm. And I'm viewing it as what appeals to multiple people. You know, I just got shit about that online. <laughs> I just got shit about that online. I'm Did glad you? you said that. Yeah. Because we had our, our young boy on here, Elijah Blake. Yeah. Super talented guy. And we talked about making music for yourself. Right. And making music for the people. Yeah, and how most artists, especially mm-hmm. very talented artists, right, make music for themselves. Yeah, and I was saying like, yo, you gotta figure out a way to make music for the masses if this is what you want to do, and this is if you want to be part of the music business, right? And it's and it's so crazy because you you know you see the you see the reaction sometime of people like, no, well, you know, music is 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 my expression. That's cool if you want to work an eight-hour shift somewhere <laughs> and then do music just at the house. Mm-hmm. Right. Or if you want to actually make this your career and mm-hmm. perform this for the masses. Right. At some point, you got to make music for them. Definitely. See, I um, I feel equally both ways. You're an artist. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because if you're making it for yourself... Mm-hmm. You're a human being, so you have the same basic emotions that somebody else might have. Like you feel you feel pain, you feel love, you feel hate, you feel envy, you feel all of these same emotions. So if you articulate that the right way and express it the right way, somebody's going to connect. People are going to connect. Yeah. So it's like during the process, make what you feel. Once you made these records, then we'll go through and figure out what'll work for what. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this one sound like it'll go, a lot of people might like this one. This one sounds more personal. This is this. So we go through and we figure out that thing. And just from a project standpoint, create a balance. Absolutely. Yeah. And me, I'm so project driven. Like, mm-hmm. I will leave off a song if it don't fit in the don't flow the story, of the, the album. Story. Yeah. Right. Like, the story is the most important to me yeah it's been times of course you compromise like you of course you want to sell records but right. ultimately first i'm the story of the album first you know when i hear scissor even on these records that you're talking about that are like massive records mm-hmm. um they don't sound like easy records right. they have catchy moments uh-huh but in these records, I hear a really talented individual doing shit that 90, 99% of people can't do. Yeah. But for some reason, that shit connects. I'm like some Stevie Wonder type shit. Wow. Where Stevie Wonder is just this intricate yeah. 
melody dancing individual yep. musically he's just he's just somewhere in the future yep but for some reason it connects it just connects and everybody everybody is on it right like she what she's doing is not easy yeah the dancing with the melodies and and the trills in between is not it's not easy yeah not even close um you know what to me what I think a lot of people don't um, pick up at first is the level of pain in her vocals. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that plays the background, but I also think that's something that really Resonance, sticks yeah, and catches. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of lot of pain there, and you can you can feel it. And then you pick up on how it sounds. Then you pick up on the lyrics, and you pick up on the cadences and melody choice and all of those things, but to me that 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 pain in her voice is is one of the glues mm -hmm. to me so it's dope it's yeah. dope to me no, amazing man i want to point out something because just from a from an executive and from from a um a manager side of it mm -hmm. something that you did maybe i think maybe like a year or so ago uh -huh. know, i think about a year ago when she got snubbed Mm -hmm. At the MTV Awards, yeah, y'all didn't decide to perform, right? Most people would have still looked at it like, "Oh, this is an opportunity; she can perform in front of the world." Mm -hmm. But y'all stood on something, yeah, and that doesn't always happen, mm. right? How does that conversation go? Within y'all team, within you know, when y'all go, when y'all, when y'all go to the war room, and say, man, what, what are we gonna do about this? Like, are, are we gonna just say, hey, you know what, uh, you know, we didn't get out of the year, but they still want us to pull up. Well, I give you context of the story first. Um, so she got nominated. She was the most nominated that mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. for uh, the MTV Awards. She didn't get nominated for Artist of the Year. Artist of the Year, Artist of the Year, okay. So with the most nominations, though, with the most nominations okay. and the Monster Year that she had. So I'm like, okay. We had a uh, a conference call with MTV about her performing. So we going through the whole call, you know, talking about performance, what slot she might be in, et cetera, et cetera. So towards the end of the call. It was like, are right, you guys got anything else? So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm curious. I don't know if, you know, we should do a separate call on this, but I'm just curious why she didn't get nominated for Artist of the Year. And um the answers wasn't, you know what I mean, up to par to what I felt validated. You know I mean? Right. Yeah. And they was like, let's do a separate call. So a few days later or whatever, I'm like, okay, cool. They got back. It was like, we can do a separate call, but we don't want to discuss the artist of the year thing. Mm -hmm. Then what's the separate call about? Right. So I'm, at this point, I'm like, I'm not upset that you didn't nominate her. I'm, I'm curious as to why. Mm -hmm. And if I can't have an explanation as to why, it's a sign of disrespect for me. So that was completely my call. I hit her. I'm like, yo, this is what I'm doing. She's like, all right, I'm riding with you. And that was that. <laughs> Top hit me later. I forgot to call him and tell him. <laughs> 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 I'm like, hey, uh, <laughs> what happened with the MTV stuff? I'm like, tell him what happened. He's like, all right, bet. Yeah. Good. So and that's what that was, and it's no, it's not a, a slight to them in particular, you know what I'm saying? But respect is at the utmost, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to show us respect, or we don't need to be a part of what's going on in the moment. So that was that whole thing. Well, I salute y'all for that. Oh my god, because everybody's not, everybody's not going to do that. Yeah. I got a lot of calls. People like, yo, you sure this is this? It's you a sure? Big opportunity. I'm like, uh. on the flip side, I'm like, 
if she's not performing, a lot of people are gonna talk about it and ask why. Absolutely. So it's gonna balance yeah, out. It's gonna, it's gonna still shake the ground <laughs> right. one way or another. So it works. It, yeah, you know what I mean? But respect is important to me. You know what I'm saying? Like just as as a person, as a human being, like let's be respectful, you know what I mean? If she did if you guys feel she didn't reach the criteria. All right, cool. I just want to know what it was. You should be able to articulate that. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, it is what it is, and that's what we stood on. Absolutely. Wow. As an executive now, um, Rev, um, and you seeing the landscape and the success that you've had, especially in the R&B space. Right. Um, what is next for you in R&B world? Man. We about to really blow your Twitter up now. <laughs> <laughs> now you about to be hella young R and B singers, yeah, right? <laughs> yes, guys, this is R and B punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This right. is it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I never look at it that way. Like even before Scissor, I'm thinking, okay, we need a different type of artist that's not rap in order to make us a prominent music label. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't specifically like, let me go find an R and B artist. So I don't I don't know. I never really look. It's if I see something and something catch my attention, then yeah. I'll explore it. So you're not looking for no R and B artists, what you're telling us. <laughs> Damn, dog. I'm not looking for any artist. Not just R and B. But I'm open to mm-hmm. any artist, including R and P. Boy, you these licks. Like, oh, <laughs> they yeah, yeah, just come to you, don't it? Yeah, you know how to double on time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I'm not looking, but if my eyes catch it. Right. <laughs> What's important to me, though, is it's the uh, the period of getting to know the artist. Mm-hmm. Like, I never just want to just sign something because they hide or because they talented. I agree. Like, I need to see your, your work ethic. Mm-hmm. I need to see... If you cool, who you beefing with? Like yeah, it's a bunch yeah. of stuff that goes into it because this is about to be a real relationship. Mm-hmm. So I'm putting my name and my life in the mix with your name and your life. Mm-hmm. So I gotta be, you know, I gotta know you. Yeah, to a to a degree. So I like that. I like that. All right, Pop, well, it's R&B time. <laughs> you might be on TDE next. Look at you, look at you man. Listen, they might be looking at you, man. I'm, 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 I'm just checking the temperature right now. He's TDE tank, man. Hopefully I do TDE something. Tank? See, see he's not looking, but hopefully I do something right now that catches eye. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He ain't looking, but... I know he hear you. I know he hear you. He hear me. Absolutely. <laughs> You got for him, my brother, if, as you ventured off into this R and B world, at twenty thousand a night, <laughs> we know you know a little something about it. And the people are interested. What they want to know? I don't know if you've gone down the rabbit hole to understand this thing that you are part of <laughs> in such a major way. And if you do, they're asking for you. <laughs> top five. Yeah. Your top five. Top five. <laughs> Your top five. What they want? R&B singers. Yeah. What else they want? R&B songs. What y'all was listening to in that promo van y'all took. Man. Another punch. 
R and B punch. Yeah. <laughs> Your top five R and B singers. Man, top five. Mm-hmm. No order, right? Just five. No order. What you feel? All right. We gotta go with uh I gotta go Marvin. Okay. Mm. Yeah. It's a great place to start. I gotta go uh that nigga Rob Kelly. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Don't be scared of. <laughs> yeah. Don't be scared of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got them hits. Mm, Roberto. Yeah, yeah. I gotta go with the king of R and B, Bobby Brown. Yeah. Ooh. I, I, I see what type of time you want. Yeah, I see what type of time yeah. you want. I'm going to get a lot of hate, but I got to go with Keith Sweat. What do you mean? Who's going to hate? Where? We're not letting no I, hate happen. Nah. Nah, nah, not with Keith. Not I, on I, sweat. I, said, I said this on Check. Twitter one time. Check. It went at me. Not on the sweat. It went at me. I wish they would. Yeah. Yeah. Not the sweat. <laughs> not the nigga that got his master's in his garage. Right. Signed to himself. Before signing this to yourself was even a thing. Right. For real. My last one, um, man. Gotta go kind of moderate. It's either between Usher and Christopher. Hmm. I'm I'm listening. Chris Raymond? Chris Raymond. Usher Brown. Chris Raymond. Usher Brown. <laughs> Absolutely. I like that. Usher Brown. Usher Brown. Not, listen, <laughs> you, you can do six. It's fine. You have no argument with me. Yeah. Not a one. Yeah, no, nah, that's my time. I like the uh the crack air R&B. Mm. The crack so that's, air that's, R&B. That's, that's Bobby and uh Man. Keep Sweat. Sweat and Teddy Riley. You better believe it. Yeah, Niggas was selling dope. Right. Singing love songs. <laughs> yeah. So what was it? Uh, what's the movie? Uh, New Jack City. New Jack City. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. That's real R&B. Yeah, he was right. listening to R&B when he had the skis up there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know she was a skis. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, man. She, she, she broke up CMB, man. Shit. Uh, oh, Nino so Cole. Broke <laughs> she broke up CMB. <laughs> Nino she Brown Cole. It wasn't her. her. It was him. <laughs> <laughs> Tender dick. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and he let her answer the phone, bro. Come on, man. He man. let her answer the phone when she called, and his homie. Hey, man, he was in love. Ten. He wasn't though. He, he wasn't. He, he was listening to R and B. Yeah, he was. It'll put you in the place. He was. <laughs> I can't even front. It'll put you in the place. And he had that fine thing too that he canceled. Oh he man. He poured champagne on her. He yeah. was wilding, bro. He was wilding. <laughs> Nino was wild. Sometimes when you the boss, hey, I buy me another one. Big thing, yeah, go. <laughs> Shit, Nino. <laughs> no, Nino. Right, your, t- your top five R and B songs, bro. That's impossible. Come on, yeah, come it's, on. It's, it's, Whatever's possible, what? it's possible. R and B songs. Yeah, you know how songs. You know how our <laughs> songs go. Come on, this is your world. All right. Well, love is joined together by the Temptations. Oh, we're going to go Temptations. Yeah. Okay. All right. Y'all know that song? Yeah, you used to play it for real. I didn't expect that. Yeah. Okay. And you said, what it'd you be do? easier to take the wet from water or the dry from sand if anybody would stop us from holding hands. And you said that, I said, yeah. <laughs> See, I like metaphors. I'm like, how you take the wet from water? But yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. one of them. Uh, I gotta go. What's going on? Why not? I mm. gotta go with "Make It Last Forever." Mm. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite songs of all times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I gotta go with uh, "Smoky and Quiet Storm." Mm. Lenny Williams, "Cause I Love You." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that five? That's five. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's five. five. You did it. You got through it. You made it, man. You made it. <laughs> this nigga know. <laughs> I, just, yeah, right. I just had this conversation with my son mm-hmm. and I said what are you going to play for when you need to let the song speak to her mm. Mm. to me that is the conversation we got to have with the youth yep. yeah 
Like, I get it. I, it's funny games. I like the songs y'all be playing. Y'all jump around, too. Y'all doing the dances, too. Mm-hmm. Truth. But you can't always speak for yourself. Truth. None of us can. Even you got three lyricists in here. We've all written songs. Sometimes, though. Right. You need to push play. Absolutely. Because I love you. Mm. Of course. You know what I mean? I watched TV till the TV went off. Jesus. Going nowhere fast. We've reached the climax. What? Uh, you know what I mean? We're together, but we're undone. What? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you got to let it speak for you. Ooh, got to let it talk to you. That's real. Who, who's saying that type of stuff now, though? That, that's what we're talking about. He actually mentioned SZA. Really? <clears throat> he meant it, which, yeah, was, no, which, he, was, yeah, yeah. which yeah. was which was wild to me, right? It's a, it's a young teenage, young man. Mm-hmm. And he what song in particular? His was song snooze? for her is snooze. He yeah. loves snooze. He yeah. loves snooze. Like, bro, it's so funny. <laughs> he he loves snooze. And then, uh, what's the other song? He, he gonna get mad at me, man. <laughs> but my daughter, my daughter, my daughter walked by his room and was like, "Dad, he listening to Twin. Where have you been?" <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. But that also kind of was a, a a glaring thing for me to mm. say. Damn, mm. where the young fellas that's giving who's, him? Who's his key right. sweat? Who's right. his key sweat? Who's his body for body? him? You know what I mean? Yeah. And um. That's crazy. We need that though. Who 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 do y'all see? I know y'all pay attention to what's going on in the RB game. Like who do y'all see that's filling that spot? Like the latest two I named was Usher and Chris Brown. Right. Like like feeling it, feeling it, feeling it is different. I mean, the attempts are there in right. terms of people that like like you got Kenyon Dixon who is like Yeah, yeah. He's right there. Like in terms of talent and story. Right. And and presence like he's 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 right there mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but he's a little he's a little older right but in terms of like the young like you know I had a conversation with papa jay the other day just about you know like he's he's got the he's got the flair of it right and now he's gotta develop the the talk of it mm. yeah yeah he got all the talent in the world got all the talent right and now it's like like, cause you know, I, me going through high school trying to figure out what to say to women, mm-hmm. and first, you know, cause I was a gospel kid, right? So I was like, man, what a friend we have in Jesus is not gonna have the same effect. <laughs> <laughs> These girls asked me to sing. It's like, <laughs> as lately I've been thinking. As lately I've been. So I so I found I I found lyrics. Right. I found the Tender Lover album. I found Babyface. Yeah. yeah. To help me learn that i sought after that i desired to talk to women a certain way right and to get a certain response yeah. and effect yeah and so i think for the young kids today do you have to desire that yeah and and the way society is viewing women or objectifying women in these days it's not on the same pedestal as they were back in our days. And we got to put them back. We got to put them back. We got to mm. put them back. Where they're the focus. And then that'll make, that'll make the music and the lyric change. Because I don't care how ratchet it is. Yeah. Girls want to be loved. Yep. Or how oh, ratchet so you saying, think y'all, she is. Y'all saying rap, rap ruined it. No. I'm not saying that actually. Because if I feel like that, I would say that. Yeah. <laughs> I do not feel that way. I feel as if the R&B singers felt as if they had to be in that same space instead of carving out their own lanes, yeah. right? And of when, it's the same thing as when, like, like, oh, rappers want to be basketball players, basketball players want to be this, blah, 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 blah. Right. Everybody used to want to be an R&B singer. Yeah. Because singing is not easy. Rapping yeah. ain't easy. Mm-hmm. It's easier yeah. than singing, though. Uh-huh. Right? Like, you got to be able to hit those notes. Your stage present has to be different. Mm-hmm. You can't walk back and forth as a singer. Mm-hmm. As a singer, like at some point, you got to get in the dirt with your shirt off. <laughs> the dirt. You know what I mean? It's a different yeah. type of commitment. No, and it, sure. it's, I was in high school and this girl I liked, she liked, she liked this 
Super knucklehead, super hood nigga. And I'm just like, that's what you want? Yeah. Are you gonna die messing around with me? <laughs> <laughs> you you told but, but me on the he went far. Shit. Me on the other hand, yeah. I'm gonna pray with you. <laughs> huh? Yeah. I'm gonna open that car door. I'm gonna respect you. He's like, see, like you're like the type of guy, like I would marry. Yeah, she gonna have fun. And I'm not right ready now. for that yet. She gonna be a little dangerous. She wanted to be a little dangerous, and. And I think what to what Jay is saying, instead of a guy saying, "Okay, well, I'm gonna keep doing me. I, I, I'll be here. You, you got, know, you, I'll be here to pick up dangerous. the pieces." Got you know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. Guy said, well, "Shit, I just need to be dangerous, <laughs> right. right?" And abandon this space, right? Completely abandon it. So again, that's that's my point. <laughs> rap room. <laughs> 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 well, I rap too, so that's you know <laughs> yeah. that's why I was Shit. able to survive. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's Do right. a little rap in there every now and then. Um, your let's make a Voltron punch. Okay. And this Voltron is gonna be your super R and B artist. So you're gonna pick pieces from artists from whatever era to make this artist. We're gonna get a vocal from somebody, performance style from somebody, the styling from somebody. Um. Jeez. And the passion of the artist. Wow. Whose vocal are you taking one vocal to make this super R&B artist? Mm. Executive punch. An executive punch. Come on. All right. So I, 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 I'm i taking my artist out, so I'm going to be biased. No. 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 You no. Do you want. No. Mm-mm. 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 You ain't got to do that if you don't want to. <laughs> I got you got to. All right. All right. You got an artist in arenas. So I mean, you got to do whatever. <laughs> you see, you see we try to set him up. Just, I'm going to just say We try to set him up. <laughs> okay. No TD artist. All right. Let me see. Uh, so I need a vocal, right? Yep. One vocal. Um... Man, that's tough. What's the next one after vocal? I come back to vocal. Never had anybody do that before. This is okay. I'm gonna allow it. Uh, <laughs> this the performance style. Performance style. Give yeah. me uh. Give me Beyonce Knowles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two and a half hours. Yeah. She Set going, changes. Outfit hard, changes. What? Though. Wind. What bundles? Uh, right, <laughs> she go hard. I've, I've never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it. Cooking, styling, the drip, the stage fits. Uh, I gotta go, with Leah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, fly, like, tomboy. Like boy. Yeah. yeah. But then. Got got classier, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. She had it. Oh my god. <laughs> um, okay. The passion of the artist, heart of the artist. They mean it. Kanye West. Mm, don't he mean it? He not a singer though, right? No. Yeah. Listen, listen. Ain't no way to heartbreak. Don't uh, don't do it. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sunday service. Sunday <laughs> service. <laughs> yeah, right. He be singing. Like, he be singing. He got melodies too. <laughs> He got yeah, some cold. That, that man passion is insane. <sighs> yeah. He make you believe it. Mm-hmm. Bro. He telling the truth, even when he not. We're gonna come, we're gonna circle back around. Back to them vocals. To huh? this vocal. <laughs> mm-hmm. I so many different vocal stylings. Mm-hmm. Um David Ruffin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you do a lot of Motown. You oh, get I it? Love yeah. Motown. You in there. Bro, I used to watch that Temptations movie every night. Yeah. Yeah, the imitations. <laughs> I like the, I like the, I like the raspiness, you know what I mean? And the, the feeling. You know what I'm saying? Imagine, imagine rough and voice with Beyonce moves. <laughs> That's crazy. Killing everything moving. Yeah. Yeah. With his shirt on. Nick, what? <laughs> everything moving. Hilarious. Break your piano back out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go here. I 
ain't saying no names. Yeah. I ain't saying no names. Yeah. I ain't saying no names. Yeah. I ain't saying no names. Yeah. Who you was? Yeah. Who you with? Yeah. What you did? What Don't say she. Yeah. I ain't saying no names. <laughs> so we've come to that segment. Okay. It's not what you know. Very important part of the show. Will you tell us a story? Funny or fucked up? Okay. Or funny and fucked up? All right. The only rule to the game, you don't say no names. Oh. That's crazy. Because <laughs> soon as, soon, as, soon as I explain it, this shit start popping in your head. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I can't tell that, that one. Can't that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> but yeah, you know, that's that's the only rule. You know, you can say, you know, where you was at, always in Miami, always in London. We, I mean, because we know, you know, you've been everywhere world in the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> R&B take you places. Yeah. I like that. R&B take you places. <laughs> Jesus so, yeah. Christ. Tell us, tell us a good story, man. It got to be R&B related? No, 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 no. no, no. All right. <laughs> that is going to sound crazy with no names. There's a bunch of people involved. That y'all would know their names. I'm sure. All right, so back. So the homie just did this song, right? Pissed the gang of people off. Everybody was mad at it. So we, uh, when the song came out, he was overseas. Then he came back to the States. First place we stopped in was New York City. And the first thing we do is say, let's go to the club because we wanted to check the temperature, see what everybody was on. Yeah. <laughs> LA stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cut down. <laughs> yeah, so we get to the club. So one of the homies approached us and talking about this particular record. So we're going back and forth. Oh, it's not personal. It's just this, this, and that. It's cool, whatever, whatever. It's like if we playing basketball, I'm going to try to beat you. You're trying to beat me, and yeah, we we yeah. good after it. Like, yeah, okay, cool. A friendly fade. Friendly fade, if you will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Another one of the homies walk up. He a little drunk. He said, yeah, y'all niggas, y'all need to... Uh, Let's go back and forth and keep it on wax or whatever, whatever, whatever. So the two dudes who approached, they get into a little back and forth, a little argument. With each other? With each other now. Okay. Because we didn't, what we didn't know is they had gotten an argument before we got there. <laughs> so they was kind of continuing it. So, okay, things settled and we go to the VIP. So in this VIP section... Is literally the front roll of the Grammys <laughs> <laughs> in this one section. Yeah. And it's four of us. We in there like we we in there fans almost. Like, yo, that's <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so the homie that got into it with the other one, he's sitting two steps down from me on the on the couch. So it's somebody right here, I'm right here. The rest of us, and then so the nigga came back to him. The ones who got an altercation earlier, he's like, Yeah. And if you ever say what you said to me earlier, then God, and he grabbed a, a bottle from the uh, table because he got all of the alcohol joints. And he said, What you gonna do? Hit me on my head with a bottle? He's like, Nah, I'm gonna break it on the table, I'm gonna cut your throat. <laughs> so it's like a movie. Right. <laughs> Like, ooh. So it's getting right. <laughs> so it's getting tense. So the nigga standing on the ground, reached up and tried to grab dude by the by the neck. So dude reached around and fired on him and they both fell on the table, knocking all the drinks over. So all these celebrities are just in this one spot. It's a scuffle now, huge scuffle. So, oh, this just sound weird with no names. But another nigga came 
who was best friends with one of the <laughs> super celebrities that was over there, he came and started beating up one of the niggas that was on the ground. So it's kind of clearing up, and he grabbed the nigga, put him close, and seen who it was. And this dude was signed to his <laughs> his homie. <laughs> But he couldn't see. He, he didn't see. He have his glasses on, so he mopping him, and oh, looked shit. like he felt so bad after the whole thing. He was signed to. Him? He was signed to this dude who was, who was going at him. Yeah. His partner. His partner came and jumped in and started because <laughs> he thought he was, they was going at his man. Yeah. So, whole scuffle break down. They get them out the club. A table was back set up in like less than sixty seconds. <laughs> Like it never happened. Like it uh, never happened, bro. Fuck that up. But the ratio from celebrity to regular person was like 70, 30, maybe. So every section was like full of celebrities. Yeah. You know what I mean? Music people, movie people, whatever. So I think it's like, it's like it never it existed. But it's, <laughs> They were prepared for that. Oh, man. That had happened in there before. That was my that was my favorite, like, night music. A little dust up. A little dust up. Right. Keep the party going. That's what a song can do. Yeah, <laughs> right. It, it can create a little dust up. song can create. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It can create a little dust up. It absolutely can. But apparently they ain't want no problem with y'all. Oh, no, it was good money. Yeah, yeah. So let me focus back on yeah. you, nigga. <laughs> was funny. I've been looking for you. You've been look, You heard what I said earlier. <laughs> What's funny is the dude... The big dude who was in the thing. So this was over. He looked at me and pointed. He was like, look, he like every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, man. <laughs> I've seen some of this shit, <laughs> shit before. It don't bother me. Oh, we man. came here to shake the temperature. Right. Nigga, yeah. This is what it is. This is what it is, yeah. Oh, man. That was a fun night. Well, my brother Punch, we appreciate you, man. Um, y'all doing great things, bro. Yeah. Appreciate that. Congratulations. We are, we are, we are fans. Mm -hmm. supporters yeah um brothers at the same time you right. know we always here for whatever man yeah um, but please man keep that shit going nah absolutely also i want to congratulate y'all like i love what y'all doing like even when we ran into you at the spot like y'all talk about the music yes sir yeah you know what i'm saying that's something that's that's really needed mm -hmm. like it's a lot of bs that goes on that people cover mm -hmm. y'all deal with the actual musicality of it and that's like, you know what I mean, that's my favorite thing. So yeah. I applaud y'all for what y'all do. Thank you, well, bro. I mean, the information is is what's going to last ultimately. Absolutely. And that's going to, you know, usher in the next generation of whatever it is. They Real can't talk. do it without the information. Absolutely. And so that's what we're here for, man. So we appreciate you doing it the way you're doing it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the R&B Money Podcast, the authority yeah. on all things yeah. Arena R&B. <laughs> arena! Yeah. And if you snooze and wake your punk ass up. Wake your punk ass up. Punch TD in the bell.